Hi, today I want to talk about Poodle 3. Poodle 3 is the latest iteration of Poodle and you can actually see a demo of Poodle 3 running at demo.poodle.com and more information about Poodle is available on poodle.com. Poodle 3's main focus is to move away from a flash-based system to a system that is mainly HTML5. When I say mainly, I refer to the fact that there are cases where the user may wish to use a flash item or there may be no alternative but to use a flash item. But in general, we're looking at HTML5. And so what does that mean? It means that we need to have HTML5 video players, HTML5 audio players, HTML5 audio recorders, video recorders. We also have a new iOS Poodle recording app because audio and video recording via HTML5 is not possible yet on iOS. Uh, we also have the familiar widgets that we use in Poodle. Are, uh, they're HTML5 also. And we've implemented cloud transcoding so that the files that are recorded and end up in different versions from different devices are transcoded into a format which is playable universally. So let's have a look at these items briefly. First of all, HTML5 players. So we have a video player here and an audio player. The default video player is the flow player, HTML5 flow player, which also has a fallback to flash in the case that uh, the file format is FLV or some format that only flash can play. Uh, but uh, we'll hear later, but in Poodle 3, it's possible to use any player that you like, in actual fact, as long as you can create a template for that player or get a template for that player. Uh, and we have, in this case, Audio.js as the audio player for HTML5. And this is a very nice player, but again, you can choose or create a template for a different player should you wish to do so. Now for recorders, uh, we have two brand new recorders and unfortunately they're not yet, well they haven't yet had uh, a design touch, they haven't had a designer look at them, but we are going to do that very soon. So although they don't look super rushy or wonderful right now, they will eventually look a lot better. So bear with us on this one. Uh, on the left hand side we see the HTML5 video recorder and on the right hand side we see the HTML5 audio recorder. So when I say HTML5, these completely do not use Flash. So they will not work on every browser or every platform, but they will work on late versions of Google Chrome and later versions of Mozilla Firefox uh, if you are on a desktop machine or on an audio, uh, sorry, on, on, or on an Android device. And we have an iOS app, which is for users of iPhones and iPads who uh, would not be able to record via HTML5 or via Flash either. Uh, you can see on the left hand side the, the little Poodle recording icon and that will appear on your iOS device. Unfortunately or fortunately there's actually no never going to be a need for you to use a Poodle recorder independently in this way. What, uh, How it will work is when the user's user goes to record something uh, and Poodle detects that they're on a mobile device, it will show them a screen much like the one you see in the middle there, where they have the choice of opening the Poodle app or uh, of uploading a file. Uh, until now, we've only supported the uploading of a file into, into Moodle and then we would do some transcoding on the server or, or behind the scenes or even not do it at all, um, which, uh, which wasn't a great experience, especially if the user wanted to record audio because uh, the iOS devices do not allow you to record audio in the browser without using some sort of application. So we now we have the Poodle app, which does allow you to record either audio or video, uh, and it will, it will make the choice for you based on the recorder that you opened up or the, uh, the link that you clicked on to begin your recording. Uh, and when you have finished your recording, as you can see on the right-hand side, it will be uploaded into Moodle, and then you simply have to quit the application. When you return to the application, uh, to Moodle that is, uh, it will detect that you have recorded uh, and it will process it as though it were a normal recording. The iOS app is currently um, in the App Store waiting for, uh, waiting for review, so it's not available for download yet, but it will be very soon. This is uh, July 24th, 2016. Now, a new feature that we have in Poodle 3 is cloud transcoding. 
Uh, transcoding is where we convert an audio or a video file from one format to another. This is necessary because a file that a video file that is recorded on an Android device or a video that is recorded using one of the HTML5 video recorders may not end up in the same file format and it may not be a format that is actually playable universally. So we need to have either a, a host of different file formats for each video or we need to have a, a, a generic format that will be playable by different uh, different devices and different platforms, different browsers. So we've chosen to transcode all audio to MP3 and all video to a version of MP4 which will give it the greatest possible coverage in terms of browsers and platforms. The cloud transcoding happens in the cloud via the Amazon Elastic Transcoder service and the audio or video recorder that the user users will directly upload that file into the transcoding service via a, a special, specially prepared URL that the Moodle site passes to it. Uh, and then Moodle later collects that transcoded file for processing in Moodle. This all happens behind the scenes and so there's no more complications with Red5 servers or FFmpeg or any of the things that people ran into difficulties with in the past. So I'm hoping that this will actually be a wonderful new system, which will smooth the process for everybody. Now, perhaps the biggest change in Moodle, which may not be so apparent initially, is the filter system itself. We've moved away from a system where we hard coded in PHP um, how to handle various um, widgets or various URLs that that the Poodle filter encountered and everything is now done via templates and the templates are editable by the user or by the by the administrator really and all of the widgets and the players that you see in Poodle all the ones that we've talked about up until now uh, they are actually templates that can be edited by the administrator and the the administrator can also create uh, players or widgets for different purposes uh, this is all based on Video Easy and Generico, which were which were where these concepts were piloted, and they still uh, they still work very well. So you, if you don't wish to use Poodle for this purpose, you can actually use Video Easy or Generico. Uh, but in in that case, people have created a, a lot of really interesting players. They've created audio players which play at different speeds, the same file, different speeds, so that the user can choose the speed. They've created PDF viewers. They've created um, uh, graphs and charts based, you know, based on um, data that's passed into the template. So there's lots of lots of creativity to be unleashed here. So this is a really exciting new feature of Poodle. Uh, another good part of this is it's not, it doesn't doesn't tie us down to a particular video player. For example, we don't we don't have to choose the video player for everybody who uses Poodle is going to be Flow Player or anything like that. That's not necessary. So uh, if, if a user wishes to use a JW player with Poodle, that's great and that will work. If they wish to use Media Element a video or audio player with Moodle, that's fine. That will work also. Uh, we can choose where which file extensions are handled by which players and we can actually uh, enter custom file extensions. So while this sounds like gobbledygook, if I explain it better, I think you'll understand what I mean. Uh, we can register Poodle to handle the .mp3 file extension. So when it sees a link on a page, which is links to a .mp3 file, then the Poodle filter will be notified and it will replace that link with whatever player it is that you've chosen to, to handle that .mp3 extension with. So in the, the standard case, we'll see a .mp3 link and we will replace it with a flow player audio player but it's possible for example to register the .pdf file extension and then to replace that .pdf link with a pdf viewer or to make or even to create custom file extensions or to create something to handle text files or something to handle .doc files uh, the world is your oyster and actually the allocation of player to file extension can be done at the course or the activity level now again, that may not sound very exciting, but when you when you consider the possibilities that brings, it is really quite useful. So you can have a particular activity in which you want the default audio player to be this three-speed player, the Atom player, which allows the user to select fast, medium, or slow in the playback of that audio. But you can limit that to a particular activity uh, or, to a, or to a particular course, which means it uh, 
the players that you use do not have to be globally registered. They can be registered just for a particular course or activity. So let's have a look at the Poodle filter settings. Uh, it's changed quite a lot. We used to have just the one page, which was very, very long, and the settings were quite esoteric, and most people really didn't know what to do with them. Uh, we have split that up into three pages, the general settings, which is where most of the familiar settings that you've seen in the past lie. We have the file extension settings, which I mentioned just a moment ago, where you can allocate a player to a file extension to be handled by Poodle. We have the widget settings, which at this stage are very minimal, but they will increase. This simply tells us how many templates at this stage uh, you would like Poodle to register. So on the right-hand side and uh, also on the left, you can see the templates. And the templates include things like stopwatches, the flow player, uh, the atom player, a light box, tabs, or the audio JS player. So you can choose to add another 20 templates the default is 20, so you would have 40, or uh, and you can edit each of the templates by clicking on the uh, the link on the left on the right hand side there. This is the file extension registration page, the file extension settings page. You can see at the top we, there is a comma separated list of file extensions that we are interested in handling, and then beneath that you will see for each of those file extensions. Uh, the choice to handle it or not, uh, and a drop-down list allowing us to allocate a player to that file extension. This is the system I broke, spoke about a few moments ago. And here we are at the course level. You can see this is the course administration block on the left-hand side. We have the filters uh, option in the uh, in the menu there. If we click on that, we can see that we have the familiar ability to activate or deactivate the filter in the forum. But on the right hand side, we actually have a settings uh, settings option. And if we click on the settings, it will return us to a page that is very similar to this page here, uh, but that just applies to this particular course. Or should the filters link have been uh, inside an activity, and it will it will apply to just that particular activity. The widgets, I, mean, I mentioned them briefly. We have stopwatches, uh, tabs, accordions, dice counters, put the Poodle calculator. Some of them are quite familiar. In the Atto editor, the Poodle Anywhere for Atto, we have a new icon. You can see on the left-hand side, uh, inside the, the red box. And this is the Poodle widgets uh, dialog. And the widgets dialog will take a template that has been registered and selected to show in the Atto toolbar from uh, the template section and I'll display a button for that inside the pop-up dialog. So the template, for example the stopwatch template, if you click on the uh, stopwatch button you'll see a small form allowing you to enter the options for the stopwatch and click the insert button and then the poodle filter string will be inserted into the file area. In the example you can see here uh, we are using the tabs and tab items. So a tabs is a container and each tab within the container is a tab item and those were selected via the, the pop-up dialog here uh, and when that activity is saved and displayed we can see it's turned into a nice uh, set of tabs which doesn't look very Moodle-like at all but will certainly spice up your courses. So as you can see, we've been very busy here at Poodle, getting ready for Poodle 3, and so many changes have taken place that I think it's inevitable that the first release, which is what we're releasing today, is in fact a beta version of sorts, because there will be issues. But we've tried very hard to uh, uh, to bring it to you to make sure it's as complete as possible, and we're really looking forward to hearing your feedback. So please uh, try it out, install it, and then get back in touch with me via uh, poodle support at gmail.com and I'll be happy to uh, to hear your feedback thanks very much